go live in July. And at that point, we, are, we hope to see the prices start to come down further when we add another element of competition into the market. Certainly, uh, once one cable lands, it seems to have a sim a, some kind of monopoly on the market. Once we have a second cable, such as Easy, coming on board, we should see prices come down considerably. Well, market players at the moment are blaming the slight dip in pricing that we've seen so far on the existence of long-term contracts with international fiber and satellite where they're forced to maintain those relationships until those contracts actually expire. Just how much of a challenge do you see that posing moving forward? I think some of the long-term contracts on, on satellite will take a time to unwind. There are three- and five-year contracts with some of the satellite providers. But there's such a huge growth in the demand for the fibre that what we'll see is um, carriers' average prices coming down quite mm -hmm. considerably as this growth takes place over the next one to two years. I've been reading that in that regard you've got a pretty uh, unique cost uh, pricing model that uh, the players could well take advantage of. I mean, could you run us through that and how much of your competitive advantage this actually represents? Sure, we have a, a much lower cost structure than the competing cable systems um, through the way that the cable has been funded. It's actually funded by 26 separate operators, each sharing a small fraction of the $260 million price tag of the system. So in terms of the overall cost structure for an individual carrier, it's much lower than one single company building a large cable system. Uh, for example, with WIOC, we have spent about 75 to $80 million on the system, and we have 400 gigabits of capacity at our disposal. That represents a very low per megabit rate, and we hope to pass that on to the consumer. This capacity offered on Easy, though, of course, as you said, will only be on offer from about July after it undergoes a mandatory uh, testing period. Through this uh, testing period, let's look at your focus on security. I mean, market players say they're unable to fully deliver some of the uh, cost-saving benefits because of the increase in vandalism attacks on the industry, where fiber cuts cost the industry on average uh, one million shillings per cut. I mean, we've already seen the two existing uh, international fiber connectivity links uh, repeatedly disrupted due to an increase in vandalism over the past six months. How are you dealing with that challenge specifically? Sure. Most of the cuts that are taking place at the moment happen actually at the terrestrial networks rather than the submarine networks. It's very difficult for a cable itself, a submarine cable, to be vandalized. It's at the bottom of the ocean and in the shore ends out to about 50 kilometers are buried uh, underneath the seabed. So for somebody to deliberately damage a cable under the sea is very, very difficult. They do have accidents at times when anchors will drag from a ship, and that could cause a, a cut to the cable. But again, we bury the cable mm -hmm. quite deep below the seabed, one to two meters in places, to prevent this. So well, we don't expect to see significant uh, disruption to the submarine fiber. Well, of course, uh, through this testing period as well, you've got to be w watching market players quite intently at this stage. I mean, what shifts have you been seeing from players who are already operating in this arena? We've already seen prices come down as people anticipate easy coming on board. Over the last three to four months, prices from the submarine systems from Teams and Seacom have actually reduced their prices. So we expect that to intensify in the period running up to July, and then once we go live, we expect to see them fall further. Well, in terms of uh, market share, I mean, what are you targeting, and in what kind of time frame, considering that you have other competitive forces, of course, at play at the same time, and all vying for the same kind of, uh, uh, well, for an increased slice of that pie? Well, sure. WIOC is actually funded by 14 telecoms operators from the region, including Telcom Kenya Orange. So we expect to see a large chunk of their capacity coming towards the WIOC cable rather than going to the competing systems who are privately financed and they don't have the backing of the individual carriers such as we do. Well, when it comes to strategy and actually cutting this uh, slice off the pie, I mean, is it all about pricing at this stage or are you looking beyond that? Because one would assume that the cost factor will only carry you uh, so far. Yeah, it's certainly not just a pricing game. I mean, all cables aren't the same. Easy has the lowest latency of, uh, it has the shortest distance to get to Europe, which is where most of the traffic is destined. So we have the best service for, of all of the competing systems because of that direct route, and we expect to be able to offer a much better service to the customer.